Hello and welcome. And this was one of our road trips we took from Chiang Mai to Ubon Ratchatani um, just before Christmas to go spend some time with the family back in Ubon and also Royette. So these map images show the sort of pathway we took. But here's some of the video along the way. So yes, we're off to Ubon Ratchatani. It's like, like a bloody 12 hour drive from Chiang Mai to Ubon Ratchatani, going out there for Christmas. And um, yeah, it's the first three hours have just been all mountains and nothing else but mountains, all windy road. And we've stopped at our first PTT where I'm just getting myself a hot Amazon coffee and also um, getting some snacks from 7-Eleven. So we'll show you glimpses of the drive on our way there. So this was a 13 hour road trip and we drove through places like Doi Korn Tan National Park, Lampang, uh, Pitsen, Yulok, uh, Pechumbun, Konkan, Royat, and Ubon Ratchatani along the way. It was a really long drive and there was periods there where you did not have any access to things like petrol stations, like two, three hours straight just going through national parks. So one of the big pieces of advice I give you here that before you leave from Chiang Mai or the other way around, just literally take some snacks in the car, pack your car with a bit of drinks because there's going to be periods along this road trip where there is nothing. And yes, you're going to eventually hit a PTT station or something like that along the way, but there is periods there where it's just pure national park that you're actually driving through. Now, Doi Khun Tan National Park, that probably could be worth a start. Uh, a stop, and it was established in 1975 as Thailand's 10th national park. And it's known for its flora and fauna. And it offers year round wildflowers such as orchards and gingers. Doi Ku Tan is botanically very diverse and home to over 1,300 different uh, species. So, yes, there's a lot to see in that particular national park. Now, Lampang, I have stopped there before, and there's some temples to see. There's a lot of history behind the place, including that it was a major city in the Lana Kingdom. However, it's, um, it was also overshadowed mainly in history by Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai. During the 1800s and 1900s, it was known for its growth in teak logging. During World War II, a bit of facts there, it was also taken over by the Japanese and used as a bit of a headquarters and bombed several times by allies. But people stop there for some of the famous temples. And there's um, so temples there such as Wat Pra, Tat Lampang, Luang. Um, there's a Thai elephant conservation ce um, centre there, as well as many other things. So yes, it's worth a stop. And there's also some natural springs and waterfalls in that particular area. Now let's move on to the next town, um, Pitsen Yulok, and excuse me if I didn't pronounce that very well, but it's one of the oldest cities in Thailand, founded over 600 years ago, and was also a provincial centre of the Khmer Empire. So that's just something to, a bit of history there. The area has a lot of history of military conflicts also, with a variety of beautiful temples in the actual area as well. Now, the next place we sort of passed through was Pechum um, Bon. And again, forgive me for the pronunciation, but we did actually stop here because we wanted to see this beautiful temple, Wat Pa Pra Tat Pa Son Ku, if I'm pronouncing it right. But it's massive, and I am going to put a link in the um, description below. So forgive me if my pronunciation is a little bit bad. But yes, this particular temple is definitely worth a stop. It's absolutely beautiful. And I did put some TikTok videos up on that, but I have got some videos further on um, regarding um, in this video showing you this particular temple. So that's absolutely beautiful. This area is also known for having um, four national parks in it also. So uh, that's just a bit of information there. Con Khan, um, Anne was telling us that this is where her father's side of the family comes from, Con Khan. So that's actually a very interesting area. And we did stop here as well because this was the first place we could get a decent bite to eat of coming from Chiang Mai. And so we stopped at the Caledonia Bar here and restaurant um, in Chumpa, in Konkan. So 
this was a good restaurant, had a good feed here. Um, and I've got a bit of videos on that as well attached within this section. And also I've put some videos on TikTok regarding this place as well. And there was other places to eat within this town. Now, the next sort of town, major town that we're passing through afterwards was Royette. Now, Royette is where Anne was born and Anne grew up. So she has a lot of family there in regards to uncles, aunts, all that sort of stuff. And so we didn't stop coming through here during the night. Um, I think we did stop near here, though, to get a, some dinner because it was getting quite late by the time we hit Royette. It was actually dark by the time we hit Royette coming through to Ubon Rachatani here. But it was, again, it's a pretty simple city. It's, um, Royette is a rural town, largely from what I've seen. It has a, some temples in it. It's got some tourist attractions in the form of, of tourist temples, basically, or temples. And one temple we did visit, though, was Wat Bua Pa um, Piram, if I'm pronouncing that right. But I'll, again, my Thai pronunciation really sucks. So I will put the link to that particular temple as well. But our final destination was Ubon Ratchatani. And this time of year, it was really cold. <laughs> but Ubon Ratchatani, um, I think it was like 14 degrees or something when we got here during this time of year. And we were freezing our butts off. And her stepfather had actually booked us into a um, this dodgy little sort of hut hotel, sort of almost like a homestay across the, um, close to where they live. And all they gave us was this dodgy little sheet. Um, and we froze. We were actually stayed in our co fully dressed from what we were wearing on the drive because we were so bloody cold that night. And luckily we had a better hotel booked for the next night. And I'll put all the links to the hotels and that where we actually stayed as well. And, um, but another fact about Ubon Rachatani, it's one of the four major cities of Isan with um, Korat, Nakon, Rach, Asima, Udon Thani and Konkan, also known as the Big Four of Isan. This is a city on the Moon River in southeast of Isan region of Thailand and is located 615 kilometres away from Bangkok. It is also known as Ubon for short. The name means Royal Lotus City. Just for some facts there. And Ubon is the administration centre of Ubon Ratchatani province as well. And it does have tourist attractions there. Like we've, some of the places that we've stopped at, it's got a variety of restaurants in Ubon. There's Western food as well as Thai food, as well as some bar areas and stuff like that. And some of the areas that we've gone to is the bars along the rivers, which are nice to relax it and they're well lit up and get quite busy. We've eaten some restaurants along the rivers there, which are quite nice. Um, yeah, there's a lot of nice food in Ubon Ratchatani if you go around. Apart from all the street food, um, there's a lot of street food sort of places all through Ubon Ratchatani. There is some clubs, some bars. Um, there is a museum. There's lots of fr uh, fresh food restaurants as well in Ubon Ratchatani. And overall, you can also take a bit of a day trip down to the border of Laos if you're inclined that way. And there's some national parks within a day trip as well outside of Ubon Ratchatani. We've gone to several places around there and it's just full of temples as well, Ubon Ratchatani. So um, if you're into um, visiting different temples and attractions, then yeah, there's a few things to see here and some national parks to explore within a few hours drive out of the town centre. There's also a zoo within Ubon Ratchatani, which I believe Anne visited when we were actually there. But I haven't seen the zoo, so I can't really comment on it. But overall, yeah, it was a bloody long drive. And we did have to stop several times, of course, because we were travelling with Anne's mother, uncle, um, Anne's sister's baby, um, her niece. And so as a result of that, whenever we come across a PTT station or um, uh, just stopping somewhere to get some Thai food, we tried our best to um, make some stops. And you really have to stop because it's a really long drive. You can't do it on your own. Like um, I was one driver. I would drive for a while until I was tired and then I would let Anne take over on this particular drive. And it is pretty much open highways all the way, which is really good. There's a lot of speed cameras along here. So be really careful 
um, in regards to speed cameras. And once you start getting into the towns, as Anne pointed out, there's a lot of people potentially without driver's licenses, both bike riders and car drivers, and they don't exactly follow the road rules too well. So um, though you think driving in the big cities is dangerous, try driving out in some of these rural areas where people are just not following road rules from what I've observed. And so you've got to stay a bit hyper alert on these roads. And if you do notice yourself getting a bit tired, pull over. The PTT stations are always really good to pull over because there's usually some food places there. There's usually an Amazon cafe where you can stop and get a bite to eat. So that's just food for thought if you're trying to stop. But as you can see here on this drive, it is beautiful scenery. There's a lot of greenery, there's a lot of mountains, there's a lot of national parks we were driving through. Um, it was a very beautiful scenic drive. And if we didn't have um, all the extended family in the car, me and Anne probably would have stopped at a lot more places and even probably stopped overnight in a few different cities. Um, adjust, but this day we're in a bit of a rush just to get to Ubon and we weren't gonna stop overnight anywhere with all the extended family with us. And, um, but yes, it is open roads. The highways are really good quality. So if you're on a motorbike or you're in a car, pretty much you're gonna have um, a fairly easy drive in that regard. It's just a long drawn out drive. But if you're going here for a road trip, it's actually a really good road trip. So you could find yourself just planning to stop in some of those sort of major towns that I sort of pointed out along the way where you might go exploring and just checking them out and going on the places like TripAdvisor just to see some of the major tourist um, locations there. I know another YouTuber, Paddy Doyle, has explored a lot of this area. So if you check out some of his YouTube as well, he's done some good videos on some of the areas around Isan and stuff like that. And I saw some of his stuff on Pechenbun, which was really nice, um, sort of videos there around what he had done there. And he's really good because he uses the drone to go over and show you some of the more scenic stuff. And, uh, but yes, a drone is on my to-do list. I'm thinking of getting the Sony ZV-1 camera or the upgraded model as well to do a bit of um, better quality vlogging. Because at the moment, I'm still only using my um, iPhone 14 Pro Max and my GoPro 9. And some of this was actually filmed with the GoPro 9 with a mixture of some of my iPhone 14 um, Pro Max video all mixed together. And I just downloaded it all and mixed it all into, um, yeah, this particular video footage here. But yes, there is places to stop, get coffee, get a bite, but there is also periods where you just see nothing. So just a reminder on that, like you could be on open roads like this, where you might not come across any towns for a while, no PTTs, no nothing. That's the reason why, again, I emphasize taking some drinks, snacks with you. And if you like your coffee, take a thermos with you to keep it hot or ice, whatever you prefer. And, um, but yes, overall, it was a very beautiful, relaxing drive. And I do like a good road trip, but I really do wish I had more time to stop at some of those places like um, Pechenbun and Konkan. I do want to explore those areas a little bit more. And maybe next time when we're thinking of going there in maybe April or May, when we're thinking of going back that way, maybe we'll do an overnight stop in Konkan. That's sort of some of the plans that we're thinking of there. But we don't know yet. Uh, it's still open to what we're going to do. But yeah, open highway, bit of music in the car or music in your ears. Or if you've got a motorbike, strap a GoPro to it. There's going to be some good scenery here to film and some good scenery to catch along the way. Just be really careful on the roads and watch out for those speed cameras. And the speed does vary in various areas, especially when you're going into the major towns. On the way back during that Christmas week, we did find it quite busy coming back. And um, a lot of the sort of PTTs, especially in those major tourist areas where we saw the big temple, just got really super busy and there was just cars and tourist buses everywhere. I don't know whether it was that time of year, 
um, that Christmas period or whether it's always busy along there. But even the temple, which I'm going to show you a little bit further on, that was just packed with tourists. But anyway, um, that's just some pieces of advice for traveling on this road and some of the things along the way. And um, yeah, enjoy and watch the rest of it. And I might put some music to it just speed to the city streets we began to feel the fire we rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher the night's young and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine Chase the night, wanna dance to the light. Pulls stars from the sky, just two hearts running wild. Never sleep, never stop. As we shout from the top, we're gonna, we're gonna be two hearts running wild.
ับพี่รับบนนะครับOn the road to Ubon Rachitani, we come across this temple and we decided to stop and just check it out. I'm going to show you it now. <laughs> just look at this thing, it looks awesome. It's got a great view up here, too, just to add to it. So let's keep checking this place out. Just look at this area, the whole area is here, beautiful. Problem is, they do have the cars everywhere here. So it can be a little bit dangerous and there's more parking down the end there. So there's a lot of parking here. There's Anne over there doing something with her camera. Just look at the design of this. It looks so psychedelic. It's so busy around this temple, uh, and um, it's a main road to Ubon Rashatani from Chiang Mai. And, um, but God, just so many people here. Thais. I only saw one Westerner so far though. <laughs> Let's go check out the view of this place. Another reason why people come up here. Also, we have this temple. A few little resorts on the mountains along here too. Leading up to this temple. Are pretty beautiful. Inside the temple here. Bottom area. Really beautiful inside. Look at these carvings, these wood carvings. Just going to zoom up. Look at that. Made from wood, yeah. Wood carvings, but the reflection's a bit full on, but still, you can get an idea with it. Let's go on the So, this side you don't have much of the reflection, but see the detail that would go into this wood carving. It's just beautiful. See, look at this. Just beautiful wood carvings. So there's three levels to this temple. This is the second level. This is the stuff you find in here. Oh, what's here? Oh, looks like pendants that's selling here. Buddhist icons, looks like crystals, Buddha. Look at that big sleeping Buddha here. Looks beautiful. Go around here so we can get a better view. Beautiful. This is the third level. Point from the top of the temple up here. Just 
just beautiful. I'm just gonna say, take a lot of bloody snacks with you on this drive from Chiang Mai to Ubon Ratchatani because the road we've taken, a large chunk of it is national park and mountains and stuff like that. And though it's beautiful, it just got basically nowhere to stop. No food, no nothing. <laughs> uh, and so we've just come about 100 k's out of Hong Khan, I think it's called. And um, so we found a restaurant and we're just gonna finally stop and eat. But yeah, just think about that. Have food in the car that you're gonna snack on. Buy some drinks, because once you hit that open road outside of Chiang Mai, nothing. It's all just bush, mountains. But beautiful, but um, food-wise and drink-wise, nothing. So I stopped in this little bar called the Joker's Bar here. And I'll put the link in the description of this YouTube video. But yeah, you can see it's quite a little trendy bar. It's got a mixture of Thai food as well as Western food and a bit of high level whiskies there. Um, and Chum Pei here, where we are. Um, yes. But we're gonna sit here and then I'm having myself a bit of a coffee and I'm gonna enjoy the food. And it's got pool tables here too. So I got the cheeseburger and chips and Anne said her uncle's ordered some Koh Pao, but I'm not sure what the others have ordered. And yes, I'm going to enjoy this now. I'm just saying overall the food here must be good because the other two are actually gobbling down the food very fast. <laughs> the food that they actually ordered. But yeah, the food here is really good. Definitely recommend this place. Yeah. Apparently Anne was just telling me too that there's a lot of expats that actually retire here and live in this area with their partners. But I haven't really explored this town before. It's about 100 k's out of Konkan. So I was wrong, this place is called the Caledonia Bar and yes, again the food is delicious here and definitely recommend the place. Yes, so if you're actually driving through this town, there's the bars there, the Caledonia Bar, right in front of me there. And I don't know why I thought it was the Joker Bar, I think that's what it was just appearing on um, Google Maps in the area. But yes, the Caledonia Bar and it's just off the main road at one of the inter intersections here. Uh, but I'll put the address in the description of my um, YouTube later. Okay, we're off. So we're going to go back onto the main road and we're heading to Konkan, the next town, and then off to Ubon Ratchatani. Okay, well, we all enjoyed the food there at the Caledonia Bar, and now we're off to Konkan. And, well, we're not going to stop there. We're just going to drive through there. And, um, and then off to Ubon Ratchatani. It's about a five hour drive from where we are and it's been a bloody long drive, but we're gonna keep going. Anyway, trip continues. You gotta love these decorations outside PTT. <laughs> Apart from the restaurants, you always get some cool things around. Look at this one. Don't know what that's supposed to be. 
But anyway, yeah, you always got snacks, Lotto, and Cafe Amazon. I did try their mocha today. Not a huge fan of their um, iced coffees. They're too sweet. But their mocha was nice. But anyway, things to do. Just noted a couple of other things here at the um, PTT. Look at that, Iron Man. Pretty cool. And Bumblebee over here. Love the detail. Yeah. Outside Cafe Amazon. I'm just going to say it's been a bloody long drive. Me and Anne taking turns to get here. But we stopped just outside of um, Ubon Ratchatani to get some dinner because we're bloody hungry. And, um, but yes, it is a so long drive. Like I'm just going to say, videos, if you've got two drivers, like it's good. Please subscribe. 12 hours to get here, to bring, almost. Um, videos um, well, probably 12 and hours photos of, stops you of do, around Southeast plus. Asia and in particular so, Thailand. Yes, two and also my other travel adventures as I get around. Thank you for anyway, watching. Dinner time.